Hello everyone and thanks for checking in on this episode of Thirst for Knowledge here on LegitMTG.com. I'm your host, Joshua Clater. And today we are looking at Naya Hexproof in Standard. Um, I believe after seeing the previous winners of the big events of this new format, that Hexproof is well positioned in the metagame. Uh, thanks to the popularity of the green-black devotion deck, of the red-white burn deck, and of the winning mono-blue deck from Massachusetts this past weekend. Why do I think this deck is good? Well, we've got a bunch of guys that can't be targeted by our opponents with Glade Cover Scout and the Tower Archer here. Witch Stalker makes things hard for Mono Black. And against Burn, we have Unflinching Courage, which will help us gain some life against their really fast starts and will hopefully negate stuff like the Mana Confluence and the Sacred Foundries. Um, I believe that the deck, due to its unin uninteractive nature, against the three best decks, or well, the three most successful decks based off wins in the format can be pretty good. Uh, Hexproof has had a good matchup thanks to Boros Charm against Esper Control and Blue White Control. And the life gaining abilities with Gift of Orzovia and Unflinching Courage will make matchups like Red White Burn and Monsters and other aggressive decks into just purely a race. Uh, this list for the astute viewer is the 11th place list from the most recent Star City Open in Knoxville, Tennessee. <coughs> We've got a fairly basic 16 creature uh, hexproof shell. Uh, I mean, every hexproof deck is going to run Glade Cover Scout. It's going to run Tower Archer. It's going to run uh, those those eight guys for sure. Uh, Sylvan Karyatid is in here as a way to help fix the mana. Uh, Witch Stalker is a, another tool to have against Mono Black. And to round out the creatures, we have Eidolon of Countless Battles, which, as you can see, is a fairly good dude for its bestow cost. The deck, if you're not aware, looks to make a cheap dude that can't be targeted by your opponents, and then put a bunch of enchantments on it. We've got Madcap Skills, which gives it plus 3, plus 0, and can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. We've got Gift which gives it plus one, plus one, flying and lifelink. Unflinching Courage is plus two, plus two, trample and lifelink. And Ethereal Armor is plus one, plus one for each enchantment, and it gives it first strike. Uh, the deck is a lot of fun for me to play. I enjoy it. Uh, the mana has gotten better thanks to Mana Confluence. And, um... I don't know why I'm holding up for a Johnny right here. He looks cool. Anyways, let's play a couple of two-mans and see how the deck does in the standard formats. I will go ahead and say it's been a while since I've played some standard. I got burned out on the format uh, as we were waiting for Journey into Nyx to come on to the clients. So I've been playing a lot more Legacy and Modern than I have Standard, so I may have to knock some rust off. Uh, in theory, the Hexproof deck should have solid matchups against the Black Green Devotion deck thanks to them not being able to actually kill your guys. 
Uh, it should have a good matchup against the Red White Burn deck because we've got multiple ways to keep gaining life as long as they don't just outblitz us. And against the Mono Blue deck, we just, I think we have better creatures. Um, and we're still waiting for a two-man to fire, which is really awkward. I'm used to these things firing very quickly. It's also been three minutes since the last two-man actually fired for standard. It's also weird. I think pack values are really low right now. Like, if you win the two-man, you're only getting, like, uh, 50 cents back on the pack whenever you go to sell it. Looking to see if I had any friends that would have a standard deck on here that I could play against. None of them are currently logged in because it's 8 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. We have lost the die roll. This hand actually looks pretty good. It gives us the mana we need to cast Archer on turn two and a Johnny on turn three. So we're going to go ahead and keep this hand. And our opponent plays out a Guild Gate on turn one. I don't know what that means. Let's look at our Scry, Stomping Ground. We don't really need it, so we'll go ahead and ship it to the bottom. We'll play our archer, or not our archer, but our temple garden. We'll pay the two life. And we'll go ahead and run that out there. It resolves. Hooray. Okay, I'll go ahead and pay the two life again. And go with our third turn of Johnny and hope that it doesn't get... Oh, it got negated. Not a big deal. Not the worst thing that could happen. We'll go ahead and attack for two with our archer. Get our temple. We'll ship that to the bottom as well. And let's try to run out an ethereal armor. Make it less likely for the Mutavolt to block. Oh, 
And what do we want to do here? We can throw another ethereal armor on the tower archer. We can put the unflinching courage on it. I'm kind of worried about the potential for supreme verdicts. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to bestow our tower archer. If he has verdict and lets this resolve, I will have a dude afterwards. Uh, if he has uh, Elspeth and uses its minus ability, I'll still have a guy afterwards. So I think the bestow was the most correct play there. that on top. Alright, there was no Elspeth, there was no Verdict. Aetherize could be bad, Mutavault activates, and Blocks is the most likely. So we'll give our guy Trample to make blocking not really that profitable, I reckon. Sphinx's Revelation for 2, puts him up to 10. We'll attack for 9 and go up to 27. They are now at 1. And we got game 1. Alright, what are we going to bring in? I like the idea of a Johnny's presence as a additional copies of Boros Charm. I'm less sold on Witch Stalker being good in this matchup. And I like Miss Cutter Hydra. The mana seemed really good, so I think we can get rid of a couple of Karyatids since they don't actually do anything in this matchup. And we need to get rid of two more cards. We want a guy... I mean, all the enchantments are really good. Uh, we'll cut an armor. Let's just cut two armors and see how that goes. I do not want a mulligan. We got a turn one guy into a turn two enchantments. We're not going to pay it. I could have paid it and went over the top with Gift, but I am planning on my opponent having... Well, I guess he doesn't really need Supreme Verdict now.
Let's keep a Johnny's presence on top, and we'll go ahead and play out our tower archer. Tension Spear gets rid of my Madcap skills. We'll gift up the Tower Archer and just keep attacking. Another detention spear. So it's quite possible that I need to be bringing in deicide. We've got ourselves an enchantment. All right, Nick's fleece ram eats it. Here's a verdict. I'm left with a 1-1. One, one. I'm okay with making that trade. Uh, we'll keep you on top. At least make my Countless Battles guy a little bit bigger. And I misclicked and forgot to attack. Oh well, not a big deal. I can uh, just charm him at the end of turn. Hello, Jace. There goes my Glade Cover Scout. White, red. Go ahead and deal four to him. No, I don't want to redirect it. And we'll go ahead and deal another four. That got dispelled. Okie doke. Let's 
go to the skies. There goes another countless battles. Tension Spear is going to resolve, unfortunately. And that is going to take my Edelin out. We'll put you on top of Johnny. And I left up the one white for a Johnny's presence. I didn't want to just... run out of 4-4 four, four and potentially not have anything for... Verdict. There was a revelation for two at my end step. There goes my Ajani. I don't know why I kept the good cards on top. I guess hoping that he doesn't plus one it. This is a rather large revelation coming up, I'm sure. For six, he'll go back up to ten. Um, not a fan of having to attack the Jace, but he's going to ultimate next turn, so... I would rather that not happen. into Johnny's presence, our dork. I just got milled for 10. Well, this game is not turning out well. It's went very long. We're up to turn 15 right now.
is the third Sphinx's revelation, I do believe. Yeah, I clearly should have brought in Deicides. We're on a stomping ground. There goes another Rajani's presence. I probably played my Boros Charms a little too early. Whoops. Architect Jace. I don't like the second Architect Jace. Why not just mill me? Unless you are completely out of answers in your hands. You've got seven cards. I can't really... I don't know. This is why I don't concede, ever. Unless I'm really far behind. Well, there's a verdict, so I'm feeling pretty good about not playing my Tower Archer. I'm a clever boy. get the out archer out there now well if I actually pay for it correctly alright now I'm super far behind but we're also on turn 20 Yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll actually go ahead and concede to the, no. No. I'd like to see how he's going to actually kill me. There's Elspeth. And that'll do it. I will concede to that. Okay, so, DSI, we decided, would be pretty good. 
I'm not sold on the value of ethereal armor in this matchup. It's the one that doesn't give us a way to go past Muta Vault or uh, Nick's Fleece Ram unblocked. So I think we're just going to sideboard like that. We will play first. Uh, we'd like to see a second mana, but we'll go ahead and keep this hand. It's got a dork in it, so, well, a couple of dorks with the Eidolon. The second mana will let, will let this hand explode, but we're not going to see it this turn is unfortunate. But the risk that I ran whenever I decided to keep it. Elixir. I'm not a huge fan of this, but we're going to run out a 1-1 Mistcutter Hydra to play around Celestial Flare. Verdict. We'll play out our archer. And hope that we actually draw some mana. Put Elspeth in one pile. We could have traded with the Muta Vault, I think, but we're just so far behind right now. That unfortunately we're not, I don't believe we're going to be able to get back into this. Uh, all right, it's done. It's over. Too far behind. And I know that I don't like conceding, but it has to happen. Uh, game one went fairly well. The deck did what it was supposed to do. 
Game 2, it did what it was supposed to do, but Celestial Flare and Deicide and Detention Spear kind of got me. It was a very competitive game. It just went to 20 turns. Uh, game 3, we saw the unfortunate side effect of running a deck with 22 lands, and that was just we didn't get any. We gambled a... a Gamble with a hand that was high risk, high reward, and it just didn't turn out for us that way. Let's see what the second match looks like. We will pay our two life. We'll get our dork out there. Dryad Militants. a trade I'm happy with. Lissai! This is getting fairly annoying. I will take two from you, Voice of Resurgence. I take back all the good things I say about you, Duck. You may not be well positioned at all just because you can't draw mana. This deck is a hot mess. Again, very far behind. I'm not going to be able to make any box that will make sense. But he's not going to attack me for lethal, I might as well play it out.
けど。Alright, he's going to attack me with everyone and kill me. Alright. Well, it's the second game in a row where we've had mana issues after two in a row that we did not. Um, Holy Mantle. I know that I'm uh, potentially asking for problems bringing in cards that cost four after seeing the mana issues we've had. But I'm just going to do Holy Mantle for Ethereal Armor. This may be wrong. I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out. No creatures, but we've got... Two Scrylands. So we're not going to mulligan and just hope that we see something awesome on the top of our deck. We'll lead off with Temple of Plenty. Put you on the bottom stomping ground. This probably ends off as a poor keep. Go another Temple of Plenty. But I figured with the Scrylands we would be able to find a guy. A guy has been found. Doesn't attack, but it allows us to block. So we'll go ahead and keep the guy on top. And as long as we're not taking up a crap ton of damage, then that shouldn't be a big issue. Alright, we'll play out our Karyatid. Play the temple. We'll keep the tower archer on top. So it looks like things have kind of worked out for us. Here, we'll just go ahead and madcap skills the archer. And I'm not seeing any flyers, so we will put Gift on the Archer. We'll play our Foundry Tapped. And hopefully we're not running into Celestial Flare. Because that would make me frown. 
because I don't really expect Celestial Flare out of the green-white aggro deck sideboard. Well, I'm pretty sure I've got this one because all I have to do is slap Holy Mantle on this guy and Boros Charmer for double strike. That should be exacties. All right. I don't want to make any changes. I think the deck is fine. It was nice to actually have mana. That was a rather pleasant development. I'm on the draw. This is the kind of hand that's like, you're going to keep me and then immediately hate life. But yeah, I'm going to keep it. Jealous of your temple of plenty, sir. I don't immediately hate life. Old Glade Cover Scout was a nice draw for me. Although, to be honest, I would have rather it have been a second green source for Archer. Let's see what the temple shows us. Well, that would be a second green source. We'll keep it on top. Take three from you, Fleece Mane Lion. I 
I don't know what to do here. I think the I think the best play is to just go ahead and cast Carry a Ted. And I think we're we're running a bit far behind in this in this match. Maybe I'm undervaluing armor and overvaluing a Johnny. I'm not going to block because I don't go, don't want to get blown out by presence. So I'll be taking seven this turn. We're going to stay back to block because we have Boros Charm and we can make our guys indestructible. I think we will block here and here. All right, so we're down to four. I don't think that was right in retrospect. I think I should have just made the second tower archer instead of the Ajani and the Karyatid. <coughs> just the three threes are coming in. We'll put Scout there and carry it to there.
I'm kind of hoping he attacks with a bunch of people. Okay, Tower Archer here, Tower Archer here, Karyatid here. Indestructible my team again. He loses a bunch of guys, I go to two. This guy double strike. Now we can go for the gaining eight plan. Or we could try to go for the blowout and try to gain 14. I think... It's better off that we have blockers, though, in case he does have removal for the gift. So we're just going to try to gain eight right now. Try to get some sort of little buffer. We're still okay as of right now. Losing the gift was unfortunate. The voice of resurgence. Pretty good about where we stand right now. we could just draw something that would let us gain life since he's got no cards in hand I would feel a little bit better though we may have already been able to win had I went ahead and suited up no, no, we wouldn't have. We would have lost on the swing back. Because I would have been down a blocker on the turn that he decided. Okay, so red here. Here. That was dumb. This doesn't work the way that I want it to. Like, multiple madcap skills won't be like... We'll go ahead and pass the turn after I pump with a Johnny. That was not my finest moment. One of these madcap skills should have been on 
another dork. No, wait, that gives flying. <sighs> Not just double strike, it's flying and double strike. Whoops. My bad. Sorry. It was not intentional, I promise. I was just so stuck on double strike that I forgot about flying. Alright, let's hop into our third match. We will play first. Uh, we'll keep this. Again, another high risk, high reward hand. Uh, we're going to put you on the bottom, Glade Cover Scout, because I'd rather have a second land right now. So we're hoping to get there. We did not. Still did not get there. Still no. Hi, Felugranos.
There's really nothing I can do right now, I believe. And he's got the second advent of the worm, so... Even if I weren't at 5, looking at 10 damage. And let's try this again. Um, Celestia Charm will probably be pretty good. And a Johnny's Presence will probably be pretty good. I like having uh, more indestructible things. Uh, we're going to take out two of Johnny's and three of the countless battles this time and see if that works any better uh, no dudes only one scry land this time we'll go ahead and ship this one back I don't want to go any further so on the bottom as well. Now I of course realize that I did indeed cut land or cut creatures out of the deck and that's probably not the way we want to be going with this since we're so creature lights. Though to be honest with Celestia Charm we're not actually losing any guys overall. Remember, we're still at 16 since I took three outs. But, goodness, all these madcap skills are looking outstanding. Deicide, again, probably should have came in. Hi, Archangel. You're fun. Oh, this did not work out well at all. And that's okay. We are playing to learn and to get the crap beat out of us on turn six. Well, yes, taking 19 is a lot of fun on turn six. All right, let's try this again. Hey, it's even the same match. There we go, this is, this is fine.
put that on top. We're going to do Presence and Deicide and Charm. And we're going to take out a Johnny's, the Witch Stalkers, a couple of Armors, and the Boros Charm. We'll keep this. We'll keep that on top. I saved the Celestia Charm uh, just in case of Advent of the Worm. And I'm not going to be running out Glade Cover Scout because I don't want to lose a guy to Charm. Obzidot. That is indeed a person. And by person I mean ghost. Should have went with gift. Uh, it didn't matter because I would have lost it to abrupt decay anyways. Abrupt decay does not make this deck happy. Yeah, Abrupt Decay is not very fun. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you shouldn't play this deck at States. There's just a lot of cards that are really good against you. Heck, even playing it now is like, do I even want to play this deck anymore? I don't know. Hey, you worm token. If 
Like I'm taking seven. We'll keep that on top. Well, I'm not really feeling good about this anymore. I guess we'll attack for five. I don't think it really matters. This Archangel's gonna make things hard. There's the land, and I'll go ahead and concede to that. <sighs> Maybe Holy Mantle is better than Ethereal Armor. We'll take out the last two for two mantles. Uh, we'll keep this. Shift that to the bottom because we've got no white mana. And we're going to go with mana development over the tower archer. How about a second white source? Or not. I mean, that's fine, too. that on top. Take the five.
Okay. Take eight. And I don't think there's going to be anything that I can do here. Back swing. Nine. Get double strike. Just put me at twelve. Four nine twelve. Uh, I'll just pass. And double strike the the team, or double strike the Eidolon after blockers. It's, I guess, the best play that I have. Didn't really matter. Alright. We are now 1-3 with the deck, so we'll play one more match. Are we 1-3? We've lost to Blue-White Control, or Esper Control, whatever. Beat green white, lost junk twice. The junk matchup just felt really bad because our guys are gigantic and they're cheap. The green white matchup felt really good whenever I drew lands. The blue white matchup didn't feel bad at all. It's just that I, again, didn't see lands. In the third game against Blue Whites. Uh, I don't want to jump in and play against Junk again. What was the last standard that fired? 928. You know what? Oh, I'm out of tickets. So, with that said, uh, thank you for watching our little bit of Thirst for Knowledge. I'm um, getting this uploaded to YouTube now so people can watch it later, and it will be on the site at around noon. Um, I think the deck is fine. Uh, the mana issues, uh, they weren't so much the color issues as it was getting the correct number in play. Like, if I needed two, I would be stuck with one, or if I needed three, I'd be stuck with two, like that. The addition of Mana Confluence actually seems really right with the deck. Uh, Journey really helped it out there. The sideboard I'm not exactly thrilled with. I Holy Mantle, it was fun. It was really good against Green White, but I could see it being a huge do-nothing against Mono Black and against blue white and I think that the uh, numbers of a Johnny's presence should go up because that card is very good um, so I'll probably have a adjusted sideboard adjusted main deck um, in the article uh, anyways I want to thank you all again for watching uh, 
Let me know what you think of the deck. Does Hexproof need Voice of Resurgence? Because this this build that finished 11th at the Open in Knoxville kind of says that it doesn't need need Voice of Resurgence, but it's a very good card to have. Uh, is Witch Stalker really good? Is Holy Mantle worth it? Um, anyways, let me know what you think in the in the comments. And uh, I'll see you on the site. Thanks for stopping by LegitMTG.com today. Bye.